So in this week's chapter of Fairy Tale, there was a special announcement. Fairy Tale is set to be published in five different magazines. Five manga periodicals, each of which bear the name magazine, will feature a full-length fairy tale chapter. And as for the anime, since it's coming out in April, for the fans that can't wait for this any longer, there is going to be a one-day special event being held. Unfortunately, I don't know the full details of that set event, but that is all the information I can give to you at this point in time. Now, there's also another thing that I gotta point out since I just realized this. Natsu is inside a castle that is on top of a cube-shaped giant island that is moving. Why isn't he getting motion sickness? And with that reason alone, why isn't Gajil also getting motion sickness? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Hey guys, LunarSpawn27 here, bringing you Fairy Tale Chapter 372, Breach. So the chapter begins in color, where we see Kyoka already handcuffed. Well, that was quick. But there is a she is looking forward to get some payback against Kyoka, while Natsu and Lusana look at her all creeped out. Now last week I got some comments explaining why Erza was able to stand up, even though she spent hours and hours getting tortured. A lot of people said that she might have some sort of healing magic, and with the ceiling stones taken off from her, she would have been able to recuperate easily. Here's the thing though, Erza, for all we know, doesn't have any healing magic. The only ones we know so far that has healing magic is Wendy in their fairy tale guild. Unless Erza has some sort of armor with healing properties, I highly doubt she would have been able to heal herself that easily. Furthermore, if her sensations of pain were brought back to normal, she still would have been exhausted from the bruises and the pain that she had to endure from being tortured by Kyoka. She would have been completely exhausted and wouldn't have been able to stand. Sure, we don't know how much time has passed since Natsu and Lisana freed her, but they would still have to deal with the frog eel thing, and this is not something that you can quickly recover with a couple of minutes rest. So how she was able to stand up, uh, I don't know, sheer willpower. Now, Erza makes Kyoka tell them where Mira Jane and Elfman are by putting a sword near her neck. She tells them that she doesn't know who this Elfman is, but she did tell them where Mira Jane was, in the laboratory two floors above. So Natsu and Lisana go off to the laboratory while they leave Erza to deal with Kyoka. So Erza continues to interrogate her, and Kyoka decides to tell her everything about their plan so easily. Then again, it doesn't really matter because the rest of the fairy tale guild already know what Tartarus' plan is. Kyoka tells Erza about the seal of face being broken. She instantly assumed that Jalal was killed, but no, he wasn't. The seal was broken by another method. Erza proceeds to ask her what are they after. Kyoka then tells her about face, the weapon that will eradicate all magic across the continent. Then Erza asks her a dumb question, what do you plan to use such a thing for? Kyoka already said what face is and what it can do. So obviously, they are going to use that weapon to wipe out all magic. Erza did not really need to ask her that question because you can instantly put two and two together of what Tartarus is going to do with face. But Kyoka then answers her anyway. All is for but one purpose, to return to Zareph. I don't know what she means by that. Does she mean like she wants to return the current world to the way Zareph wanted it to be? I don't know. Well, anyway, Kyoka then breaks off the chains, although I didn't get why she did that earlier, the instant Natsumi Sana left, but I guess it was to catch her off guard or something. Especially since the restraints were only meant to seal magic, not those who have curses. And I'm kind of glad she broke free because I was hoping that this was not it for her. So she proceeds to attack uh, Erza, but she blocks the attack. For some reason, Kyoka looks surprised, and then Erza kicks her through the hole. 
Now, this was mentioned earlier that each demon was created from each book from Zareth. Now, it has been confirmed that the demons, the Kyukimon, and everyone in Tartarus were from the books written by Zareth. It seems that Kyoka can do more than just raise and lower sensations, but she can also stretch out her claws, which she does so towards Erza, but she dodges and blocks them with her sword. Now, while they continue to fight, Erza proceeds to give Kyoka a speech, which I don't know if this is another one of her Nakama friendship speeches, but it's basically her saying that it doesn't matter who you're devoted to, you should be the ones making decisions yourself. Humans have things they are devoted to as well, but what is important is to not lose yourself, not lose the ability to think, the courage to not run away. You are the only one that walks your path. Is Erza trying to convert Kyoka, a demon, a member of Tartarus, to turn good? Well, maybe trying to tell her that she should think things through and decide, hey, maybe we shouldn't follow a leader that wants to eradicate all magic from the world. Yeah, here's the thing. Kyoka is a demon. To me, it looks like that they're doing things of what they believe is right. Not being manipulated or anything. And I haven't actually seen any demons that think that this is wrong. So I just don't get the point of that speech. Or maybe it's because I've heard speeches like this in other shonen, but they probably do it better. Honestly, Erza should save the speeches until she fights against Minerva for the third time because we all know she is going to try to convert Minerva to the good side, even though I don't want her to. Well, anyway, during the fight, Erza summoned another one of her armors, this time with a giant lance, which manages to pierce Kyoka down to the ground. We cut back to the rest of the fairy tale guild being attacked by Tartarus' guards. We see Grey using his ice to make magic to create an ice wave to freeze the guards in front of him. However, one guard tries to attack Grey from behind, but we see Juvia water kicking him, saying, How dare you try to hug Grey Sama from behind? Ugh. That was not funny. I mean, we got panels of Gajil attacking, Wendy attacking, Levi, Lucy and Loki, hell, even Makarov, the fairy tale guild master, also attacking. All silent panels, kicking the guards' asses. But when you show Juvia attacking, you have to make her say something stupid like that? How dare you try to hug Grey Sama from behind? These guards are trying to attack and kill Fairy Tail, not trying to hug them. If this is one of those so-called funny moments between Grey and Juvia, it's not funny. This just shows that Juvia has a one-tracked mind and just shows how freaking obsessed she is towards Grey. There were times when Juvia did get character development, did have her moments that weren't involved or connected with Grey. Whatever happened with that? Seriously. Hiromashima, will you stop making Juvia look like a Grey-obsessed fangirl? They do have good moments with each other, but this is just ridiculous. <sighs> okay, I'm done with that. But, I mean, seriously, I like Juvia, I like her abilities, I just wish that Hiromashima doesn't make her freaking obsessed with Grey all the goddamn time. Even though with Fairy Tail managing on their own, guards keep coming one after another. According to Max, they even brought Loxus, Yajima, and the Raijinshu with them. Makao then asked Kana why they have to bring the wounded with them as well. Okay, I can understand you cannot have the wounded in the battlefield. You take them away from the battlefield, probably to the nearest medic. However, later on in the pages, we do get a panel of Loxus and the others with Palyushka. I will admit it would have made sense if they left the injured to the nearest hospital or something, if the town that they live in have a hospital. But then again, you can't leave them at the guild because the guild was going to blow up. So I can understand why people would be offended with what Macau would say. But it would have made a lot more sense if Yajima, Loxus, Breed, Bixlow, and Evergreen remained in their card form so that they're easier to take care of. I'm just saying. Now, with Elfman, he's still feeling guilty over what he did. Kana manages to snap him out of it, saying, If you got time to sit around feeling sorry for yourself, then do us a favor and get rid of some of these guys. You're a man, aren't you? And in the next page, in the next panel, Elfman's like, You're right. I'll make sure to take responsibility for this. So yeah, I'm kind of glad that Elfman is not, like, moping around for the entire chapter. I'm kind of glad he snapped out of it and decided to take responsibility by taking down some of the guards. Romeo is actually wondering how they're able to make it to the castle, since because of the gravitational field, they're at the bottom, and the only way they could, like, get above surface would be going around the cube. But that would take too long, and because of the guards, they're being delayed and being held back. Not to mention that they're gonna tire themselves out with all these guards that they're attacking. Since I noticed that Makarov is in his giant form, 
why doesn't he like punch a hole through the ground for them to break through? Maybe dig their way up. But I guess because of all these guards, he doesn't really have the time to do so. They notice something protruding from the bottom. And then in the next page, we see Erza bursting right through from the top to the bottom of the cube island. And with Kyoka, by the way, who got hit by the lance, and you know, considering how sharp that thing is, I thought that she was going to be skewered by that thing, but I guess not because she has tough skin. At least I think she does. So yeah, um, Erza beat Kyoka like that, and I'm kind of disappointed with Kyoka in this one. So thanks to Erza, she creates a breach in the island, which will allow Fairy Tail to head to the top of Cube. We cut back to Natsu and Lisana heading towards the laboratory, but they are interfered by more of the guards. Natsu stays back to fight them while Lisana goes on ahead. He uses his fire dragon slayer magic to kick the guards. Then all of a sudden, the Largo! Everything goes all black, and the guards were completely frozen in midair. Somebody walks towards Natsu from behind, and it turns out that the person is the ref. <laughs> and the chapter ends with him saying, This is the ref's bookshelf, Tartarus, the city where my books live. So yeah, that is Fairy Tale chapter 372. What did I think? Well, to be honest, I thought the chapter was okay. I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. So, I will give it an okay. As much as I kind of liked the Kyoka versus Erza fight, it did look a bit brief, and for some reason there was the whole uh, speech that Erza made, which I didn't really see what the point is with that. Especially considering that Kyoka is a demon. Speaking of Kyoka, I was a bit disappointed with her in this chapter. I mean, she was supposedly like the leader of Tartarus in this one. Well, the leader of the Kyukimon, at least. She was ordering people around, she was acting like a leader, and you'd expect someone like her she would be a strong fighter. But no, she wasn't defeated like that. She still has her demon transformation, so I'm expecting her to do that. And hopefully she wouldn't be taken down like that by Erza so easily like that. If she is taken down so easily like that, even without using her demon transformation, she kind of sucks. I mean, I don't want Tartarus to be hyped up and then all that hype led to nothing. But hopefully that won't be the case in the next chapter. Seeing Fairy Tail versus the guards, I thought that was pretty neat too, especially with Kana knocking some sense into Elfman. Although the Juvia moment annoyed the hell out of me. Now as for the final part of the chapter, I wasn't expecting Zaref to arrive all of a sudden. But then again, it makes me wonder what was he doing this whole time? And where the hell was Mavis? But I I am glad that he's shown up because we know that he knew about Natsu, but Natsu didn't know about Zareth. So maybe we'll get some dialogue, we'll probably learn more about his intentions, about using face and with Tartarus. Maybe even learn a little bit more of his character development or backstory. I am looking forward to that, at least. So, you know, despite some of the dumb moments in this chapter, there were some good ones, and overall, I'd say that this chapter was okay. It was decent, at least. Zareth honestly kind of made the chapter for me, and I am looking forward to what he is going to do next. So next week's chapter is called To Let Live or Let Die. Probably gonna be um, Natsu and Zaref's conversation. Probably debating whether humanity should live or humanity should die. Or maybe not humanity, but magic. So yeah, that is Fairy Tale Chapter 372. Tell me guys, what do you think of this week's chapter? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you a bit disappointed as I was with Kyoka in this chapter? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video if you like it and subscribe to more videos. Also, be sure to check out my Facebook fan page and Google+. So yeah, that is Fairy Tale Chapter 372. I'm Lunar Spawn 27 and I will see you guys later. Bye. Wait a minute. That remark I said about Kyoka having tough skin. The demons from the Book of Zareth are like Iran cars. The Kyukimon are like the Espadas, their demon transformations are like the Resurrections, the Book of Zarev is like the Hogyoku, which they were created from, Face is like the Oken, which would mean that Zarev is like... Okay, I gotta stop thinking things like this.